everyone. Uh, my name is Issei Suzuki, and together with my partners, um, Kelvin Wong and Xiao Xiao, we'll be talking about the uh, shape memory polymers, uh, uh, micropillar structures for dry adhesion. I'd like to start off by actually, actually asking a question. Um, how would you assemble uh, this laptop? Careful. <laughs> Good answer. And uh, what about these furnitures? How would you, if you need to move, how would you disassemble and how would you put them back together? You would need, for both applications, you need screws and um, uh, bolts uh, to work that. And then what about these uh, speakers, uh, sound systems that would take hours to put together? Obviously, we see that um, taking these complicated structures for reuse um, is a lengthy process, um, and it can be very complicating. And what if we thought, what if um, a high-strength switchable adhesion um, could make this process better? Um, this is where our shape memory polymers come in. <coughs> so today, I would like to talk about the background um, and uh, talk about how shape memory effect works, um, as well as uh, uh, the use of why we use um, shape memory pillars to do this. And then, uh, Xiao will talk about the methodology and the synthesis and the test of uh, how we ran the test. And then. Um, uh, Kelvin will talk about the observed properties, uh, adhesive and shape memory properties, and then the challenges and areas for further research. So we looked into nature to answer some of the questions that um, I posed uh, before. Um, and we saw that uh, gecko foot pads are amazing um, at uh, you know, attaching onto any surfaces um, and detaching very quickly. And the way they can do that is they use uh, these keratinous micropillars um, uh, using uh, Van der Waals forces and capillary forces. Um, Velcros, uh, you may or may not know, uh, was also inspired by uh, um, nature, um, uh, burdock seas, and uh, they use uh, mechanical interlocking, as seen, shown in the picture, um, to uh, adhere and detach really easily. And uh, in order to explain, uh, some more, uh, we need to talk about uh, well, what are shape memory polymers. And shape memory polymers, um, they're materials that can transform um, from a predefined shape to another in response to triggers such as temperature, light, or magnetic field. Um, and the two states are referred to as program temporary shape or permanent shape. And this is what we refer to as shape memory effect when um, the materials switch in between these uh, two states. So the example of a shape memory effect um, as you can see in the diagram, uh, we have what's a, a coiled, uh, what's called programmed um, material at room temperature. And then if you uh, just use a blow dryer um, to heat them up, in just about 35 seconds, they turn back into the original shape um, that they used to be. So this is pretty amazing. Um, and then exactly how does this happen? Well, uh, you um, conventionally uh, process the material, and then we have to deform at above the uh, glass transition temperature, um, and then cool down to room temperature in a deformed state to uh, have it in a program state. And then we recover the pillars, uh, recover the material to above the glass transition temperature to get it back to its original shape. And uh, we note that the glass transition temperature then is of critical importance because um, uh, this allows it to happen, and that um, the 60 to 65 degree temperature range um, is uh, very uh, easy to use, um, and it can be used um, in some of the uh, applications that I mentioned before. And why do we use pillars? We use pillars because, uh, as I mentioned previously with the Velcros, um, there's mechanical interlocking. Uh, the surface, two surfaces, um, when they're pressed against each other, they can uh, interlock, and we can see some significantly uh, increased contact area uh, via high aspect ratio and tunable pillar orientation. Um, and so it's essentially what we're aiming for is an enhanced Velcro. And I think now you can see that the material we use, um, the shape memory polymer, um, uh, enables reversibility. And the structure, the micro pillars, uh, enable for adhesion. And that, this is specifically why we're using um, uh, the system that we're using. And so uh, our goal was to successfully fabricate the SMP micro pillars and test their adhesive properties as well as the shape memory properties. and then. Um, tweak and basically optimize parameters such as pillar orientation, modulus, contact area, aspect ratio, and surface chemistry to achieve best adhesion. And our ultimate goal would be for us to um, 
have basically these three characters, characteristics, uh, reversibility, universal attachment, and strong attachment with easy detachment. So with that, um, I'll hand it over to Xiao to talk about the methodology. Thanks, Yisei. Hmm. So I'll quickly talk about the two systems we used. Uh, one is uh, on the left here, PMMA, uh, Coblock, Pegma, and on the right side, DA2, which is epoxy-based. So these are the chemical structures. Uh, I won't talk too much about that. Uh, so the reason we use two systems is that uh, we want to compare the different uh, uh, modulus these uh, systems have and uh, the different vast transition temperatures made these different properties. So quickly, the fabrication of these, uh, of these pillars. So to start with, we mix the chemicals uh, seen in the previous slide uh, into a liquid precursor. Then we use uh, uh, a dropper pipette to put on a glass slide of seen uh, in figure one. Uh, so the precursor fills, fills the PMS mold uh, via capillary force. And then we cure the SMP uh, precursor using either UV light or heat. Uh, then this is cooled, air cooled to room temperature. And then we just peel it off. Uh, and then we get these uh, pillars. So the adhesion test uh, is uh, just by putting, as you said, mentioned earlier, we're looking for interlocking. So we have a uh, uh, layer of pillars on the bottom, layer of pillars on top. And we put them together. And then we press them, uh, as shown here. Cut them. We we'll cut them off. So when we get the pillars, not the sides, and then we put them together. And here's the device we uh, the device we made to measure adhesion. So basically, it's just uh, uh, holding the holding a weight right here with the sample. Uh, Calvin will talk about the results. Uh, so just to visualize the um, pillars that we were able to successfully fabricate. So on the left, you see a side view of an optical image of the pillars we made. And on the right, you see an uh, SM, SM image of the top view of the pillars that we made. And the important fa uh, features here is that the pillars have high aspect ratio, and also they are dense, meaning the spacing between them are, is very small, and they're very uniform. And these are features that are important in terms of uh, enhancing mechanical interlocking. Uh, so one of the first things we wanted to test is definitely to check that uh, these pillars, in fact, have shared memory properties. So we tested uh, the pillars for both systems, for the DA2 system on the left, and also for the PMA copagnon system on the right. And in general, when we strain our scissors microscopically, meaning when we have just a weight on top of our samples, we see that for the DA, for both systems, we do not, uh, in general, get shared memory effects. But sometimes we do get local recovery for the PMA copagnon system. So based on these results, we had two uh, hypotheses that primarily the reasons why our pillars are not recovering is that when we strain our pillars at high strains and high loads, they basically, they're, they're basically cracking. As you can see with the image um, here, that we see these macro cracks at the root of the pillars. And the secondary reason as to why our pillars are, are not recovering is because, because of the dense structure of our pillars. Once we deform them and they come into contact with one another, they have strong attractive forces in terms of van der Waals forces and capillary forces. And the recovery force that we apply is not sufficient to, uh, to recover our pillars. So we, we did some in-situ uh, shimmer effect experiments. So the three effects of EV irradiation are local heating, transition, and ch charge interactions. Uh, and we, we, based on the images that we, we have from our results, we do feel that local heating is the uh, more predominant effect. So this uh, image shows uh, from left to right, uh, we program our pillars using uh, Merkham tips. Uh, heating it up with glass hydrogen temperature, uh, and then deforming it using these Merkin tips, and then cooling it back down so that our pillars are deformed in this state. And then we heated back our samples using the E-beam so that our samples basically recover uh, back to its original state. So this is strong evidence to show that um, shimmery effect do in fact occur in our pillar systems. Finally, we did some uh, adhesion results. As you can see for the DA2 system, uh, with a higher modulus, we were able to achieve a pull strength of about 36 uh, newton per centimeter square. Whereas for the uh, PMA copagnon system, which is a acrylic system, which has the lower modulus, has the lower pull strength. And this is expected because you would expect a material with higher modulus based on me mechanical interlocking to have uh, higher pull strength. And these results are com actually comparable to some of the commercially available uh, adhesives that we find as some of the uh, adhesive systems that have been uh, conducted by some of these uh, research groups. And, um, and finally, uh, so we're able to successfully uh, fabricate uh, 
our pillars in both the DA2 and PMA Copegma system. We're also able to see Sigma effect in both uh, when we, we strain it in situ, but of course, as you can see, when we, we did it microscopically, we were not able to achieve uh, Shimmer effect. Uh, and finally, we did see positive lesion results in both the Shimmer and polymer systems through mechanical interlocking. Um, and that based on the, the modulus that we received from our experiment, that we can vary the lesion strength uh, through that. And some things for our future work is that we can tune the mechanical properties of these materials. For instance, we can change the comp composition of the uh, chemicals that we use to, uh, uh, to make these uh, shimmer polymers. And based on the cross linking density, we can, we can tune the mechanical properties. And we can also introduce uh, composites to the material as well to make it stronger. Uh, finally, we can also tune the, uh, the 2D and 3D structure uh, so that uh, we, can, we, we, we can give it like uh, hexagonal symmetry or we can tune the aspect ratio or the spacing between the pillars and we can uh, tune the agent through that. Uh, and finally, we're able to see a uh, shimmer effect on, on one end, but we, uh, not strong adhesion, but we're able to see strong adhesion on the other end, but no recovery. And therefore, uh, we, we think that through more investigation, there'll, there'll be a sweet spot in between where we can get both adhesion and also uh, shimmer effects. Uh, on that note, I would like to uh, thank Professor Xu Yang and Professor Zhengong uh, for helping us with this project, and uh, Shimon Changlong.